My name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor and I'm on a mission to rebuild and restore this 110 year old classic sailing yacht Tally Ho. And there's lots of different things going on here right now but this week we're going to be mostly talking about Tally Ho's propeller because I want to cut the prop aperture and bore out the hole for the prop shaft and stern tube before we get into planking. Before we get right into that though let's check out what some of the other guys are up to. Right now I'm just working on making a template for the shape of the transom. Before now I've only really made a detailed template for the shape of the fashion pieces um, when they were built. When I rebuilt and reinstalled the transom, um, I basically just cut it to the shape of the fashion pieces, uh, which was the sort of the quick and easy way to do it. But now I need to review the lofting, take some measurements uh, and make sure that the final shape that we're going for uh, is going to look elegant and symmetrical and match in with the shape of the rest of the hull. So now I've lofted the shape of the transom by taking measurements from the body plan and transferring them here to a grid with a slightly different frame of reference. I'm not going to go too much into it. But this shape should now be the shape we're aiming for for the back face of the transom. The reason that it's a bit complicated is that the transom is raked, so it's not plumb or vertical, whereas the rest of the frames are vertical. So that's why this extra step of lofting is required. So now I'm just cleaning up the edges of this template to make sure that it's uh, nice and consistent with the marks from the nail heads underneath. And then in a minute, we're gonna put this up against the actual transom and see how close we are. We're expecting the transom to be a little bit larger than the template because uh, I made the fashion pieces a little bit larger because the bevels were very difficult to work out correctly, so I just made them a little bit oversized. So here I've just put up the transom template um, so I can mark out the final shape that we're going to cut it to. And this isn't too bad, there's probably about an inch to fare off on average. So at this stage what I'm really hoping is that this line does fare into the frame properly. As we fare down to the line and start laying battens across we'll find that out. So now I've marked on this first side I'm gonna flip the template over, do the same on the other side and that way uh, we'll be able to make sure that we are keeping it symmetrical. Working on the final, final bits of fairing on on the hull, but it's a complicated intersection here. Um, they say uh, anybody can build the middle of the boat; it's the front and the back that are the hard parts. We we established a profile on the transom, uh, a final uh, defined line that was pulled off the loft floor. 
So I'm cleaning up the end grain on the uh, transom planks and, uh, and the fashion piece here. This needs to be a really good bearing surface um, for the what we call the hood ends of the planks. This is not a caulked seam. Uh, every other seam on the boat will pack with cotton, but this seam is a tight seam. Um, we'll probably get a bedding in there of some sort and then everything gets screwed into there. Load water line is about right here. So when the boat's in the water, uh, you can't see anything below here. So that's what you can see. You want it to look really good uh, and symmetrical because uh, this is one part of the boat that you can see both sides at the same time. <laughs> So I'm just waiting here to pick up Charlie, who of course has been helping us with a bit of filming and editing. And Charlie has been commuting from Seattle to spend a few days up here every week. Now I'm waiting here just outside the airport because Charlie commutes in his own small aeroplane, which is very, very cool. And although it's early days right now, uh, it does seem to be going very well. It's taking a bit of load off me already, and hopefully it's making the videos better. There's certainly gonna be more footage and more content. And in general, the project's going great at the moment. Um, I'm really happy with the team we got here right now. I'm really pleased with the fairing. Pete's done an amazing job, but it's looking really nice. Pete's next job is going to be fastening the floors in place. And to enable him to do that, I need to do a little bit more lining out work. I've already done the bulk of the lining out, but I haven't drawn the actual position of all the planks on the hull yet. So I need to spend a bit of time drawing out the position of the broads and the garboard. So all the lower planks of the hull that are gonna be in the area where the floors are. This is uh, my airplane. Uh, it's a Cessna 170, built in 1949. Uh, my wife and I have owned it about 25 years. My wife is a pilot as well as myself and also my daughter. Um, the airplane is named Bessie after my grandfather's cow, who is very reliable and very slow, which sort of characterizes this airplane. But she is very useful for the mission we have right now, which is to commute back and forth from Seattle to Squim. Um, I'm over here several days a week and then back at home in Seattle the rest of the time. Uh, given the ferry ride or having to drive all the way around the south end of Puget Sound, uh, it's quite a time saver to be able to fly over. It's about a 25 minute flight from Everett. So this is part of my daily commute. Um, I come over here by airplane and uh, then the rest of the week I, I get around by bicycle. So today I've been lining out the broads. The broads are all slightly different sizes and shapes. So I want to draw each seam onto the actual boat and onto all the frames. So I put a few battens up. They're not quite in their final position yet. They're all slightly different widths back at the stern, but they're the same width a bit further forward. So it's a challenge to get them to taper all evenly. To help with that, I've drawn some of the measurements on a piece of plywood, and I'm using that to get the ratios that I need on each frame. We're still a way away from planking, but it's actually really nice to get some battens on the boat and see how some of the plank lines are going to look. I think eventually the planking is going to look amazing.
So over the past few weeks, with the help of a shipbuilding engineer um, who's been helping me out from the Netherlands, we've been figuring out what sort of propeller that we're going to be able to use on Tally Ho and the shape and size and position of the prop aperture. For a little while I was considering having an offset prop which means it would come out of the side of the hull and there wouldn't be any aperture at all which is advantageous for sailing because you don't get the turbulence in the water that is caused by a prop aperture but has disadvantages especially when it comes to cruising in more remote areas or um, maybe in high latitudes because it's more likely to get fouled by something in the water like a stray rope perhaps. It would also be a really quite a big design change from the original so I decided in the end to put the prop in its original position on the centre line of the boat. So as we move towards planking I want to bore out the stern tube and cut the prop aperture because I believe setting up the boring jig is going to be a lot easier before all the planks are on and cutting the prop aperture first just means there's less material to bore out. I've got the shape and size of the aperture uh, in a drawing so I just need to scale it up draw it on the stern post and then cut it out. The exact position and size of the prop aperture and the prop itself is a real compromise. Um, however you do it, you have to compromise something. If you have the prop quite far aft, so the aperture is mostly in the rudder, then you actually lose a lot of steerage power because the more you turn the rudder, the less of the rudder is actually in front of the flow of the water. So ideally you want to have the entire aperture forward of the rudder um, in the boat itself. But that can't be done because there's only a limited amount of space before you get to the rabbit and the start of the planks. And also because you don't want to cut such a big hole in the stern post that it has no strength left. For sailing performance, you want the aperture to be as small as possible, or non-existent if possible, uh, because of the, all the turbulence it causes. But for power when using the engine, you want as large a prop as possible, blades that present the most surface area to the water because the larger the prop, the more efficiently the engine can transmit its power into forward motion. So there's a lot of compromises to be made, um, but finally we settled on a shape and position for the prop aperture uh, based on a couple of different props that we decided we could use for the boat. It's going to be a feathering propeller, which means the blades will turn to offer the least resistance to the water when sailing, when the engine's off. It's going to be roughly 22 inches in diameter with either three or four blades.
So I've roughed out the prop aperture, but before I clean it up really well, I want to bore out the hole for the stern tube. I've got a big boring bar, which I'm gonna to use to widen the hole to its final dimension. But the boring bar itself actually has quite a large diameter, so I've got to enlarge this hole quite a lot before I can even get it in there. The bits kind of look like they're flying away from the rod. Oh, really? stuff yeah. It's away. As you can see, one of the cutting blades from this bit has uh, broken free. So now I'm just gonna weld these back into the, uh, the, the sort of blade housing part of the bit. So the first drill bit boring bar that we used uh, was not that effective, but it did make it all the way through eventually uh, with a bit of effort. Um, but now we've made the hole big enough to fit in this next size up of boring bar. And I've actually set up a jig here with a guide, one on the inside of the boat and one on the outside of the boat. And they are holding the boring bar in exactly the right position, exactly on the center line where we want the prop shaft eventually to be. This larger boring bar works in a slightly different way to the other one. It has a cutting blade which actually just fits into um, a bunch of different holes all the way down the bar and so you can position it in any hole that you want and you can change the amount that it protrudes from the bar um, which obviously changes the diameter of the hole that you're cutting and then there's just a small set screw to hold it in place. The boring bar itself only has a couple of feet of travel before one end of it will come out of its guides but uh, once you're nearing the end of the travel then you can remove the cutting tooth and you can move it further forward and then that gives you the same amount of travel again so you just keep on moving it as you advance through the piece of timber. So I'm hoping that this is going to cut through the purple heart effectively. Obviously it's a really hard, strong, dense timber to cut through and we've got a 31 inch hole to drill here uh, at about 2 inches diameter.
So the rest of the boring actually went very well in the end. The larger boring bar, the second one that we used, is actually far more effective than the first. It cuts much better and I was able to bore through the entire stern assembly really very quickly. Looking through the hole you can actually see where the beam shelves join right in the bow of the boat and that's a nice proof that the uh, hole is right on the centre line. Now this isn't quite the final diameter, it is going to be a little bit larger but I don't want to actually drill that out until I've got the stern tube in my hand and I can measure it exactly. But now that the hole is big enough to get that large boring bar in it very easily and I know how effective and easy it is to set up and use, I consider this job largely taken care of and just finishing that up uh, when the time comes is not going to take much time at all. The prop aperture does also need a little bit of fairing and cleaning up but I didn't get around to that this week and again it's just a quick job that could really be done any time. Right, well it's been a funny couple of weeks and a little bit slower than normal because one of our crew actually came down with a fever. And so to be safe, uh, no one came into the workshop for a few days while that person got tested, but they got the all clear so we're all relieved and back at work now. However, we didn't get quite as much bronze work done as we normally would have, but I'm really pleased to have made some progress on the prop aperture and that whole area. And we should be doing a lot more bronze casting next week and fitting and fastening some of the floors and knees into the boat. But that's all we've got time for right now, so thanks a lot for watching and a massive thank you to everyone who's donated or otherwise supported the Tally Ho project. It does make a huge difference and it means that we're able to take the time to make and edit these videos, so I really, really appreciate it. I'll see you next time. Cheers.